Welcome to the Non-Essential Podcast. I'm Steve Gibson. I'm Ben Matlock. And uh, I'm going to fluctuate my voice wildly. I'm Ben Matlock, and <laughs> you're here to tell stories. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, welcome back. We're, we're here again. Fourth of July week. We're doing it on a holiday week. Woohoo! Aren't, aren't you proud of us? <laughs> like, after yeah, going, they- like, this, like... 50 fucking episodes and not missing any time like now we're just talking before the show like man we're gonna miss a lot of time <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe not maybe maybe your kid will come like right out and be I just like need dad to write, like, do the podcast yeah. and win <laughs> I was gonna say I need to write a bunch of creepy pasta that involves a crying like baby so we got built in sound effects <laughs> it's just you just pull some like shining shit where it's just like all baby and no sleep makes steve a dull boy <laughs> and that's all your word document says for like nine pages <laughs> yeah it's sadly still be the best thing i've ever written yeah but yeah last week i told a story about uh how walking in the morning can be yeah. kind of fucked got um, rave reviews from your mom so yeah <laughs> I can I can always count her. She's got my yeah. back, you know. You get yourself a family that's got your back. <laughs> um, I, I I don't know. I think that I, like I like how that story came out, but I think yeah, it, it was my like I said when we started this format. The worst thing that can kind of happen is if you make a story that's just okay, because <laughs> it's just like well, there's not not a lot of material there. Yeah, but it's hard because. I know I know we're not doing an original one this week, but uh, I've been working on some stuff, and I'm sure you at least have ideas. Um, when you, I, I don't know, maybe I can't speak for you in this, but when I when I'm writing for this kind of thing now, it's like I'm torn between trying to make it something that you can laugh at and yeah. trying to make it good, and then, like you said, if you land in the middle, then you're fucked. <laughs> it's right. like. <laughs> Yeah, like, and that's, but I don't want to force it. Like, I don't want to make it, like, too ridiculous unless, like, that's the idea at its core. Mm-hmm. You know, so I want to just write it naturally and see what happens. But last week, I think it was just, like, you know, I, I, you know, it's not the best thing ever written, but I think it was a solid idea. Um, you know, so I needed to go back to someone this week who really knew how to write some some good fucking material that would a veteran of the genre a, a veteran of, you can tell they're a veteran because their username was avenging angel yeah um, i mean that that tells you all you i mean you don't fuck with avenging angel like yeah but, maybe complaining angel or <laughs> like spiteful angel yeah fucking holds a grudge angel but doesn't do anything about it. But avenging, that's active. That's seeking vengeance. Passive aggressive bitch angel. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I brought a story this week. I have not read it all. I've, like usual, I only kind of touch on it. But I can tell you I already kind of like how this is written. Um, and we'll just see where it goes. This is a, a story called No Windows. All right. The following was retrieved from the home of Connor Sagan in Artesia, New Mexico, by the Eddy County Police Department on July 16th, 2014. I really hope Eddy County Police is real, because if not, like, that's one of the most random, like, police department names. Yeah, and I hope they have, like, a deputy named Ed Eddy. I'm like, Ed Eddy of the Eddy Police... Whatever. Yeah. I hope there's, like, a fucking singer one day named eddie county (laughs) this journal was found on the hard drive of sagan's destroyed computer on a word document the journal posts were not dated or numbered but the document was last edited on the date of the discovery sagan was discovered dead in his home that day after neighbors reported strange noises and lights coming from his house the cause of death was determined to be radiation poisoning strange fissile materials Emitting, emitting, sorry, dangerous levels of radiation were also discovered in the home and were subsequently destroyed as a low-level radioactive waste. Okay. So I don't know that that's, like, common procedure, but... Yeah, like, radiation poisoning is a, like, excruciatingly, like, painful, slow 
thing. So this is already a strong start because, yeah, like... And I don't feel like the street cops that would get called to a call like that would have the training to immediately recognize, hold on, this is a low-level... <laughs> Hang radio- on, this is low-level radiation. Shoot it. Um... And I do give credit to the neighbors for calling and reporting strange noises and lights because I would never have the confidence to like call the police and say there's strange lights going on. Like you, you would well, just sound insane. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, like you know, it, it, it's going to be hard not to bring up Chernobyl if you bring up radiation around me. But when the chernobyl reactor exploded and they showed this on the hbo series that's how i knew about it but it was true i guess when it blew up it sent up like a blue light into the sky um and that was the radiation just like fucking with the air basically (laughs) um but i do like i do love the idea of like radiation poisoning happening so fast the dude's dead before he can even like be like i don't feel so well Mm. Microwaves work that way, though, so... Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, and, the, like, you know, also with Chernobyl, they just sent, like, firefighters to go deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't know what the fuck, so, I, you know, it's not <laughs> unbelievable for cops to be like, hey, well, I guess we'll go check it out. Yeah, well, sure, they'd check it out. I'm just saying they wouldn't identify it as a radioactive, like, danger. They'd just be like... Huh, this stuff is weird. Uh oh, we just melted too. Oh, this kind of burns and now bleh, like right. that's pretty much how it starts and then it's like, hey, you got all the radiation, you're done. Alright, so now the journal starts proper. Decided that I'd keep a journal of what's been happening. I'm a private investigator and I've seen some stuff lately that I that even I don't believe is actually happening. PI work isn't what you see in movies. Companies usually hire me to investigate internal theft and fraud. Not a whole lot of busting the bad guys, at least not in the way people think. Anyway, after a slow week, I got a phone call about this really strange job offer. This guy had a feeling he was being stalked, but didn't have enough details to file a police report. Not usually my line of work, but I couldn't afford to turn it down. My mortgage was about ready to have me doing birthday parties which is what I would hire a private investigator for. Just yeah, <laughs> entertain a, me on my birthday. I feel like that's one of those things that the writer's family, like raised them to think is a saying. <laughs> like, I, I, I feel like he's really trying to channel like that old, like gumshoe private dick mm. nor thing. Or like, Hey, step off. About, that's, that's my genre. I, 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 I was can't about to be doing birthday like parties. Like, see, <laughs> like, like that's the vibe I'm getting from this. Mommy, mommy, can I have a private investigator at my party? <laughs> Let me tell you, it's not all catching bad guys. Sometimes you're the bad guy. <laughs> it seemed easy enough at first, you know. I didn't know what I was actually getting my in- myself into, though. I recorded our initial phone call and transcribed it here. Connor Sagan, private investigator at your service. <laughs> that's a great way for a private yeah, investigator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he just lost all credibility with me. That's a. I guess then, for some reason, he just wrote "Men in Black" here. Um, I have to imagine that's like who's talking to him, but I, I don't know. Uh, like, if you just say "Men in Black," I assume we're gonna just start reading the script from the movie. <laughs> hey, Connor. Name's Jeff. I'm having a bit of a problem. What can I do for you, Jeff? I think somebody's following me. This car has been tailgating me home from work every day this week, and this morning I woke up and my curtains were all open. I close my curtains every night, Connor. Somebody was in my house. Somebody was in my house, man. Like, that really escalated. Yeah. From, like, I think I'm being followed to they're here. Especially since he's talking to a stranger. It's like... (laughs) Listen to me, Connor. You're my best friend. You gotta believe me. (laughs) He sounded really panicked, like this was keeping him up at night. Wasn't sure if he was all right in the head, but I kept listening. All right, take it easy. I can help you figure this all out. Let's focus on this car. What's it look like? Get any tags or what this guy inside looked like? A black Cadillac, like a really old one. Had his windows tinted super dark. Couldn't see a damn thing inside his car. 
No front license plate e- either. My heart sank. It sounded like the mob. <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum, bum. And him being so flustered started to make a little more sense. You owe anyone money? What? If you owe somebody dangerous money, they might be after you. I don't owe nobody money. Did you see something you shouldn't have? Nah, nothing like that. Only thing I've seen recently was this big light behind my house a few weeks ago. It made this awful noise, but I figure we're so close to the airbase that it's some government aircraft. <laughs> it's the most like Twilight like idea- Zone set up shit ever. It was like, but I, I like the idea that he's the one person in the world that would see a weird light by a government like air facility and be like, I just figured it was some government aircraft. Yeah. And not be like curious about it or excited about it. It's like, yeah, hey, it is what it is. Like, you know, I see weird shit sometimes and stuff. What the fuck does it, how do you link that possibly in your mind with the car? <laughs> like <laughs> that too. You're like, oh, I'm being followed. But that does remind me that one time I saw the, the sky was kind of a reddish color. And like, just a light? Yeah, man, like a bright white diamond of light. Crazy shit they're coming up with now. Where do you live? Jeff tells me his address. That ain't too far away from me. I I don't remember anything like that. You on any meds? God damn, I'm not making shit up. You have to help me, man. (laughs) I like that this is a transcription, but he just writes, Jeff gave me his address instead of transcribing the address. Yeah, It's like, I don't want to fucking think of a fake address. And I get it. I I hate coming up with that stuff. One, two, three, 123rd Avenue. (laughs) (laughs) All right, all right. I'll be over and we can talk about payment and what I can do. This guy gets to the point. He's like, whatever this is, I'm getting paid for it. But I like that. I think the payment discussion would be up front. Not like I'll come over there and discuss payment. I'm going to come over there with a bat and you're going to give me $300. See? (laughs) He said something, but it was really distorted. What? More distortion. You're breaking up, Jeff. I said it sounds good to me, Connor. See you then. Bye. Oh, that means the line was tapped. Yeah. Or Connor just, like, dropped his phone, which I I do a lot when I'm talking to people on the phone. Like, I'm not used to phone calls, so... Like, when it's actually ringing, I'm holding it like it's a bomb. Like, (laughs) like kind of fumbling with it and shit, nervous. This is weird. (laughs) Oh, my, what's it doing? I think think the phone's broke. I went to Jeff's house and we talked for a while. I learned that he's an auto mechanic and lives alone. The house is pretty big, so Jeff must be good at his job. He and I agreed on me following him around all day, from a distance, of course, to see if I could discover anything about this guy following him. After we finished talking, I asked if I could look around the property. I found that there's curtains on every window of the house and also on a sliding glass door to Jeff's backyard. Jeff's yard is fenced in with maybe a quarter of an acre of woods outside the fence to his name. A few trees were burned in places, and Jeff said he hadn't noticed it before, but that there were some neighborhood kids who burned and vandalized his property periodically. <laughs> That's no, like, it's just government planes. Oh, yeah, kids just burn my shit. It, it just, like, yeah, maybe you live on a fucking, like, demon road or some <laughs> shit dude because that's not normal like i don't go outside and like up fucking kids set my lawn ablaze again i like that this private inv- investigator is so good that he makes note that there's curtains on the windows it's important because uh turns out jeff wasn't lying he has curtains and he does shut them sometimes <laughs> had a bad dream that night that was floating on a cloud that i was floating on a cloud and fell through and hit the ground splat just like a fly on the windshield. I woke up screaming, Something, not something that happens often to me. I'm like, he, this guy just jumps around. Holy shit. And he, I like that this private investigator, I mean, he doesn't just like write a diary. He writes a diary. Like yeah. if you're writing about your job and your dreams. Like... <laughs> Took a shit. Took a long time. Met up with <laughs> Jeff later. Don't remember <laughs> eating black corn. Boy, Jeff's cute. I hope he likes me. (laughs) Met up with Jeff and followed him to work. Nothing suspicious, and Jeff's drive isn't too long. While he was working, I waited in a parking lot across the street. Was bored out of my mind the whole day. 
I heard on the radio that they're doing some celebration of the anniversary anniversary of the Trinity test, which was the first ever detonation of a nuclear bomb. Must be running out of things to celebrate. <laughs> I, that's, I, yeah, but that is something we would totally celebrate. Yeah. When Jeff pulled out of his work later and started driving, a black Cadillac came around the corner and started following him, just like he said. I went to write down his tags, but there wasn't a front or back license plate on the damn thing. I gave Jeff a call. Pull over a little ways down. Are you out of your fucking mind? Nothing's going to happen, Jeff. I have a gun. Nothing's going to hurt you. Except maybe the gun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what if somebody does hurt me, huh? I'll shoot his ass. This has to stop. All right, I'm pulling over. I did, in fact, have... I like that that calms him down. It's like, what if I get hurt? It's like, don't worry, I'll get revenge. It's like, okay, okay, okay. If I shoot you, then I'll shoot myself, I promise. I did, in fact, have a concealed carry weapon, but I had never needed to use it before. Jeff reluctantly did as I asked, and I quickly caught up to him. He stayed on the line and told me the car pulled out over behind him, but nobody stepped out of it. I parked behind the mysterious car, stepped out, and tapped the glass of the driver's side door. Even up close, I couldn't see much inside. It's amazing anyone can drive like that. Something hit the glass hard and made a thumping noise. I nearly shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this guy's ready I'm for keeping, fucking action. I'm keeping track, though. And I've I, I did it in my story, too. Um, but because of this, like, like I said, I'm much newer to the creepypasta genre than, than you are. And so I'm, like, trying to figure out the rule. It's like somebody watching cricket for the f first time, and you're like, what Why the fuck's going on? Why do they take a break for tea? What the fuck? Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm making notes of things that, like, creepypastas, like, apparently have to be. Um, first Bowel person seems control. to be one of them. Yeah, there all, there has to be that I nearly shit myself or I nearly piss myself. Like, every story I think I, was, so I wish there would just be one story that I would, like, commit to it and be like, and I did, <laughs> and then I did shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then the killer is like, that's fucking gross, and he left me alone. And, yeah, and then, like, you spend two pages explaining how you had to, like, clean up awkwardly in a public bathroom <laughs> and just leave your shit in the trash. I, I nearly shit my pants. Inside the window, I saw a face, a bald, pale man with fl a flat nose and sunglasses that were slightly angled from the from touching the glass. He didn't roll down his window or say anything. He just stared at me. I didn't know what to do at first, motioning for him to roll his window down, but he didn't. I screamed for Jeff to call the police, and he says that he said that he tried, but it wouldn't dial through. That's not possible. 911 cannot dial th can't not dial through. So I tried and couldn't get through either. I panicked That's and pulled... That's impossible. <laughs> That's so not possible. Fuck, the impossible is real. I panicked and pulled out my gun, ramming the butt into the window. Or again, this is because the guy wouldn't roll down his window. So he's like, you motherfucker, call the police. I'll break his window. <laughs> I panicked and pulled out my gun, ramming the butt into the window, but it just bounced off. The man suddenly pulled out and nearly ran me over, forcing me to jump out of the way. He sped off and I quickly lost sight of him. I met up with Jeff back at his house after the incident and we found that all of his curtains were open. I confirmed that before we left, all of his curtains were closed, and he told me all of his doors and windows were locked. There were no signs of forced entry anywhere. I decided that I would stake out Jeff's house overnight. He might be in danger. I had never witnessed anything like this before. Jeff treated me to dinner. That might seem strange, but this wasn't a business transaction anymore. It seemed yeah, I not knew it. You said he was cute. <laughs> like, they've done nothing to build up that kind of camaraderie. Well, but he just saved his life from a bald guy in a Cadillac. I mean, you you yelled at Jeff to pull over and call nine one one, and he did half of those things. <laughs> I told him he didn't need to pay me; that this one was something far outside of my experiences or qualifications. I staked out on the other side of the road. Jeff didn't have many neighbors. Most of the night was uneventful, you know. The radio kept going on about advances in radiation therapy. They even had an interview with some doctor, but I had never heard of him before. It must have been around 3 or 4 in the morning, and I was falling asleep when a flash of light blinded me for a few seconds. A large, bright diamond hovered out behind Jeff's house. 
I swore Jeff closed his curtains before he went to sleep, but they were open again and the light was shining through his bedroom window. Then I heard the noise. Fuck, I probably lost some hearing. The closest sound I could compare it to is a jet engine, but even louder if that's possible. Well, yes, it is it's possible. It's very because, possible. Yeah. Because, you know, you're like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> In all the universe, the loudest thing I can think of is that damn jet engine. Man is truly the most evil animal. But even louder, if that's possible. Jeff's trees in his backyard were alight, and as the craft moved closer, I could see something latch onto his roof and burrow through the shingles. It was completely white besides two gigantic black eyes and had four limbs that ended in giant hands. I was frozen in fear. The light intensified, and I felt my watch burning into my wrist. The thing pulled Jeff out of his bed and jumped back into the craft, which vanished in nearly a blink. Good thing you did this all behind the fucking, like, across the street. Like, Jeff, you might be in trouble. I'm going to watch. You're like, <laughs> wow, somebody really should have stopped that from happening. <laughs> if only I had hit that car window a little harder. I went to the hospital and was treated for second and third degree burns. I told them I fell into a campfire. I don't know how they bought <laughs> Because that's a very believable thing. You look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't the know how they believe I. But this, yeah. <laughs> this guy seems quite dumb. Mark it down. You know, like all the fucking like burnt, burnt hands the hospital has to deal with. You think you're the only one who's like, I fell into a fire. Like, yeah, that's a totally believable story. After I was released, I went back to Jeff's house to find that the entire block was blocked off by police. They told me that the area had been irradiated by the detonation of a small nuclear device, which was supposedly because of a terrorist attack. This had right. been in I mean, I fucking hate when terrorists attack houses that he just said there's, like, no neighbors around, really. Yeah, like, one big house with one dude inside. Take that. American scum. <laughs> yeah, this is that's a total death to America moment when you go after like one fucking auto mechanic. <laughs> what will you do without your mechanics? <laughs> to, be, to be fair, like there's a, a lot of people in this country think they are the target of like terrorism. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like no. This had been in the news too, which I hadn't gotten a chance to listen to. I'm too scared to go to the police and tell them what I saw. I'm worried they'll think I'm crazy. I've been feeling sick and went to the doctor today. It turns out that I have moderate radiation poisoning, which I should recover from. I told the doctor that I had been in the area of the recent detonation, and he tells me that's why I've been puking blood. All right, if you're puking blood, the doctor's not going to be like, you'll be, you'll be good. Like, <laughs> that's normal. You know, when you're that's dying, my... that's normal. Look, when you puke up an organ, then come into the... I was in the middle of a golf game, damn it. <laughs> it's it's all right. And, you know, it might, it might be weird when you're basically your entire body's, like, dissolving into, like, fucking jerky. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that that's normal. You should make a full recovery. <laughs> Maybe I just hallucinated the whole thing. I had a terrible dream last night. The corners of my bedroom closed in on me, impelling me in four different directions. I'm afraid to sleep tonight. I did end up falling asleep, so that's a quick jump. <laughs> I'm afraid to fall asleep, fall asleep, but not that afraid. <laughs> well, <laughs> Good night. if you wanted to make it realistic, you should have been, I'm afraid to fall asleep. J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J J I woke up a few hours later. <laughs> yeah. I drooled on my keyboard. Think it, tank it's broke. <laughs> I did end up falling asleep. It's like 2 in the morning now, and there's a light outside my window. It's not like the craft. It's smaller, but it's just hovering there. I have neighbors, but they all have their curtains closed. I don't think it woke anyone else up. There was just a knock at my door. I turned my porch light on and looked out the peephole. It's the same bald man from the Cadillac, just standing there in a suit with a black tie and sunglasses. He doesn't look very happy. I'm not letting him in. 911 is not working. It's about three now, and I see a really bright light. Sound familiar? The noise is back. My door. 
Did he write the b? He, he, he did. He wrote b yes. and then v many times. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you're writing a journal, what's going on? It's up to you to to write the sounds down. But that, but that's such a great like. You don't have to write an ending move, like just just like oh, and the monsters here. Hang on, <laughs> you know, like. Yeah, I think like, he should have probably the bald guy was probably telling him what he needs to do to like survive the alien and he's like <laughs> fuck you bald guy that's what happens when you judge somebody based on how much hair they have yeah and also the fact that he knocked after you tried to break his car window right. says this guy you say he doesn't look happy I wouldn't be happy either having to talk to you but like look you've pounded on my car window with a blunt instrument that would never break the glass to begin with. Yeah. And now you want to answer your fucking door at three in the morning for some reason. Right. That's it. We're sending in the alien. (laughs) And the creepy bald man. Uh, All right. So there's a little police excerpt wrap up here. Oh, there's more. Uh, Police were also able to recover the following excerpt of a, a journal article from a piece of paper on Sagan's desk next to his computer. There's a lot that's frightening about first contact. Some people argue that it's already happened, that not all of those UFO sightings and abductions are photo edits and stories. But if that's the case, why haunt us so enigmatically? Why isn't it as simple as befriending us or destroying us? The answer is that our fear is something to prey upon, that the most useful way to learn about any species is to reduce to them to their rawest survival instinct and see how they react. In the grand scheme of the universe, we are weak, unintelligent savages. Why would diplomacy ever be a first resort? Well, that guy just fucked us, because if they're trying to test us, like, okay, how do they react to a threat? (laughs) They panic and bash out a window with the butt of their pistol, and then watch as we drive off and still don't shoot at us. Right, don't do anything. Invasion is on. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Like... And it's like we're preying upon their fear, and even that doesn't work because it's like we you won't get the credit anyway. Like let's let's see what the humans do if we keep opening their drapes. Right, like because we'll keep saying like you can fucking blow up as many houses as you want. We'll just be like, oh my god, these terrorists. <laughs> They're blaming each other, idiots. Oh man, that that didn't disappoint. That was a fun one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like. Again, and again, you know, like we make fun of these stories and good fun. Um, you know, it's, it's not a commentary on Avenging Angel as a writer. Um, no. it, but the, like, what a fucking funnily like written piece. Like, it just jumps around so much. Yeah. And one of the hardest things to do for me anyway, as a writer is stay consistent in my storytelling and there's a you know there's different uh, things in this story that that kind of show that same um struggle like the oh i'm so broke that the mortgage company is going to make me do birthday Bur- parties and then the next day i told him don't worry about paying me brother this thing is weird it's like wait yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got a weird one here. I don't need the money anymore. I'm going to go I do just birthday parties. I appreciate party. the challenge. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll be doing birthday parties across the street, but I'll check in <laughs> in case a fucking alien just rips you out of your house. That's fucking but, uh, hilarious. But it's interesting because it does show us like what things that the the writers themselves find creepy and there's there's a lot of common themes if we wanted to like actually get like lit crit about these these stories which i i don't at least not at this <laughs> particular <laughs> juncture but um even like the these like internet creepy pastas that leave plenty of things to laugh at they all hit at very common themes yeah. like when you're talking horror yeah i think you know like i think probably for me personally and maybe it's something I should try while we're doing this format, but I think UFO stuff is the hardest thing to do as far as like a scary story, like as far as subject matter. And I think for me, it's because alien shit doesn't really scare me that much. Yeah. For me, it's more of a, like a interesting, like, Oh wow. That just changes everything that we know about life thing. It's not like a horror 
thing. Even if like the alien killed you, at least you would die being like, hey, aliens what? exist. Hey, the food <laughs> chain is evolving. This is right. great. No, like, I, I mean, yeah, you, like if you're being threatened or whatever. I, th- I think the thing is like the moment you call something like a UFO or a, like an alien sort of threat, it's like you're defining it more. And we've talked about it before where it's like, you know, a lot of horror's bread and butter is by keeping whatever's after you pretty vague. Right. So, even, right. so even if you describe the monster of your story, like if you don't describe where it's from or what its motives are, then like, you know, you still have that sort of mystery, which is what makes most, which is what goes a long way to make your audience feel uncomfortable with right, a UFO, right. you're already kind of defining, well, we don't know where exactly it came from, but it came from space, and it's probably... And it just wants to kill us, right? Right. It, it either wants to kill you as a threat, or it wants to study you because it's like a higher intellect thing or something, and then kill you because you're useless at that point. But so the, I, the more common thread, though, in this one, and it's funny because we've made fun of it, because so many of these stories start with the oh, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy. Or maybe I'm crazy. I don't know if I'm crazy, but you got to believe me. I I think the most common thread among most of these stories, and I get it too because it's something that would be terrifying, but almost in a different level, is just knowing that there's something bad happening to you or to someone else or it's going to happen, but not being able to convince anybody else that yeah. it's that it's real. And, I mean, we see that – and one of my favorite classics, and it's like a cliche, whatever, but the um, Twilight Zone with the William Shatner and the airplane yeah. terror at Nightmare, 20, 000 feet, Nightmare at 20,000 feet. 000. Yeah, or 2,000. I don't – however many feet. <laughs> right. 20,000 leagues under the feet. But you could say, oh, that's a horror story about a gremlin. It's like, no, it's not. It's a horror story about a guy that sees that – his life and everybody else's life is in danger and can't convey that. Like the real fear there is not being able to convey right. what you know to other people. And which is and hilarious about that it. episode. Cause he could just be like, there's a monkey on the wing. And it's like, <laughs> any, they might not believe him, but they would understand it. Yeah. And now, I mean, that story doesn't work because everybody has cell phones. You just take a picture of it. Yeah, the but, name of that is Nightmare at 20,000 Feet. 20,000, um, yeah. It's uh, actually from a Richard Matheson story, which is a pretty good one. There's something on the wing. There's something. Thing oh, on there, the wing. There's such a great, and I have a gif of it that I use on Twitter all the time, of just that monster, like, being wired into the wing like he just sort of floats onto the wing and it's just like it's such a fucking great image and like special effects they <laughs> they had to start somewhere right <laughs> but i would i you know i would be so fucking terrified too like I, that's more scary that's a, to me than something like hob, hopping on the wing or clawing onto it or something. If he, you're like, where, where the fuck are these wires even coming from? There's like something that, on the wing, but there's something even bigger controlling it. It's like that Chappelle show sketch where like Prince dunks and then he like lets go of the rim and gently floats down. <laughs> it's like that is so much more scary to me than like an actual like flying monster. Just just put some wires on like a monkey thing and and then there's that scene where he's just like right up against the window. <laughs> <laughs> and and Shatner's like, "Oh my god." <laughs> uh, it's classic for a lot of reasons, but yeah, yeah. that that that's a theme that I think is hit in almost every um even like say your story last week it wasn't so much like the main character trying to convey it to other people but it was more the main character kind of struggling to understand it yeah 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 and like like i said like that's you know it's kind of a cheap thing because i do think you can make a scary story that's like defined but i think i think it's just you know if you have the option to be vague that brings a lot of sort of uncertainty and discomfort to a, a reader or a viewer or something so i i do think that's something that you know horror has going for it and that's why i think like ufo stories like kind of throw that out the window 
because of, you know the origin's so explored now in fiction like yeah you can say like it comes from a tentacle monster planet like well okay but it comes from a planet on a ship and like we've we've seen that a million times now yeah and that's where i mean and, it, and it's getting tough because even this has been explored but where you start to get the stuff like uh one of my favorite books growing up was sphere by michael Crichton, and they made a movie about it and I liked the movie more than a lot of people did, but uh, but they start to explore the topic of like, well, it's alien, but it's also human. And is it from the future? And it ended up here in the past somehow, or you know, you you have to yeah. really, really start playing with um, all sorts of themes. But but yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, but that's uh, no it, windows. No windows. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. I. <laughs> It's, that's another thing that theme to um and I God, you you pointed out I did it really bigly with my story, but where you come up with a title and it's like you can tell the author had something in mind, but the title and the story never really connect. connect. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, to be fair, I like you know, I the last one I did was named Morning Walks because fuck titles. They're hard to come up with. <laughs> the only thing I hate worse than titles is character names because it's yeah. for me it's so hard to come up with a convincing person like name. Yeah. But yeah, you know, now I just wanna start a story with like I shit my pants. Let me tell you why. <laughs> As I sit here mopping up the trail, <laughs> as I clean up, let me try crap. to explain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's the show this week. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, be be sure to uh, tell your friends about the show you didn't enjoy. Yeah, we um, we just crave attention. It can be positive or negative. We don't really care. I wouldn't. I would not be on the internet this long if. Negative attention didn't. <laughs> negative attention did what it was supposed to do, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, we'll we'll be back, you know, next week with more shit. <laughs> Bye. Maybe literally. Yeah. Maybe, maybe literally. <laughs>